Okay friends, here we go again. This is my top 10 worst films of 2015. I've just done a best of and now I'm doing the worst. And these are the ones that really didn't do anything for me. They were shit, basically. So we're going to start off with number 10. A film called Barely Lethal. Starring the legendary Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, what can I say? Teenage girl version of Mission Impossible meets Kick-Ass. She's basically a teenager who is amazing at doing action. And she goes to a teenage school to get away from being an action hero. And Samuel Jackson is monitoring her from afar. He's got to look after her. And enough said. It was turd. Right, number nine. A film came out in 2014 called Divergent with Kate Winslet in it playing a baddie. Basically, think Twilight meets... The X-Men meets all these other shitty stuff that teenagers are into it's about a group of teenagers divergent and they have to choose groups a bit like logan's run they have to choose groups and that's going to be their path in life and there's all these baddies are watching them and it's in the future and there's no world it's derelict and everything that was shit then they did a sequel called insurgent which is number nine two hours 15 minutes of boring boring crap Starring pretty boys and pretty girls running around in leather clothes and lycra and shit like that and garbage. Number eight. Channing Tatum is funny in Magic Mike. Good laugh. He's also good in the G.I. Joe films. He's alright. He's, he's what you get. 21 Jump Street was brilliant fun. 22 Jump Street was turd. Right, he then made another one this year with the Oscar winning Eddie Redman, or Redmayne if you want to call him from America. And we are talking Jupiter Ascending, the Wachowski brothers who made The Matrix and all that stuff. I didn't understand the plot, it was set in the future. Channing Tatum has got a goatee beard and a pair of pixie ears, I kid you not, and short hair. And he's also wearing leather and lycra. And he's got to save this girl called Jupiter. And Eddie Redmayne is camp. A bit like a cross between Kenneth Williams from the Carry On films. And Priscilla Queen of Desert. Over the top. Very camp. Loads of sci-fi. Loads of jumbled up mess. And another turd. Right. Number seven. In 2014 Keanu Reeves made a fantastic brilliant action film called John Wick. John Wick was a great film. Action galore, fun, blood guts, the lot, all brilliant. Then he teamed up with Eli Roth who also made The Green Inferno this year and he made a real shit turkey called Knock Knock. Keanu Reeves plays an architect, a very successful one, who used to be a DJ. He lives with his wife and his kids in this nice remote place near the edge of the sea in California. And his wife, on his birthday, the weekend, him and his children go away for the weekend. He stays at home on his own to work on his birthday. And he loves his kids and they all bugger off. And then one rainy night, that night, he's sat there in his room doing whatever he's doing, playing music in the background, and he hears this knock-knock on the door. Two girls, teenagers, between 18 and 21, dressed scantily, scantily cladded, saying they've just been dropped off out of a taxi and they're looking for a house that's having a party. Don't forget, he lives in the middle of nowhere on the edge of this hill. So he lets them in and the girls try and seduce him and it's all about turning the tables on the sexes. I gave it an hour and I couldn't talk, watch anymore. It was shit. Vumpf, out you pop, off you go, not interested. Keanu, a turkey. But he is making John Wick too. Yeah. 
yeah, next year. Right, number six, Guy Ritchie. Famous for lock, stock and two smoking barrels. Snatch, rock and roller and loads of, and being married to Madonna. And he made the Sherlock Holmes films with Robert Downey Jr., which were good. This year, he decided to remake The Man From U.N.C.L.E. TV show into a film with Arnie Hammer from Lone Ranger and the Superman guy. Don't even know his name. Shit. Boring, rubbish, crap. I didn't like Mission Impossible as a child. Oh, not Mission Impossible. I didn't like Man From U.N.C.L.E. as a child. I didn't watch it. And now I can see why. This was bad. As in, really bad. Enough said. If you want to watch it, watch it. If you want to waste two hours of your life, go and watch it. I don't like it. Right, number five. Here we go, number five. A few years ago, a game was made into a film starring Timmy Oliphant called Hitman 47. That was shit. <sighs> Loads of action, no plot. So they decided to reboot it. And call it Hitman Agent 47. I went to the fucking cinema to see this and waste money. <sighs> you can have great action. You can have Mr. Spock from Star Trek playing a baddie. It still doesn't make the film good. Another turd. Move on. Number four. A few years ago again, we had a trilogy of films... In the vein of James Bond, good fun, good laugh, really great style. Made by Luke Besson and the gang, starring Jason Statham. We are talking about the legendary Transporter films. They were great fun. That's how you do action films. Cheap, fun, great action. Loads of laughs, loads of gunplay. Jason Statham, cool as anything. Looks cool, drives a cool car. They decided to remake it reboot it or refuel it after the shit tv series they've refueled it and called it transporter refueled and put a guy in it who looks like the guy from 50 shades of shit Ugh, can i have me 95 minutes back please it was bobbins transporter refueled isn't any good without jason statham learn your lesson no good move on Number three, in the 80s and very early 90s, we had four films that were great. Chevy Chase films. We're talking about the National Lampoon's Vacation series. The first one, in the vacation, they went to Wally World. Great film. The second one, they went all over Europe. Real good fun. Loads of British humour. The third one, he had a Christmas, which was amazingly fun. The fourth one, he did Vegas, which was funny as hell. And then this year, they decided to remake Vacation 1 with the guy from The Hangover. Paging Dr. Faggot. Yes, that one. All the best bits of the film were all in the trailer. You don't need to know any more. Crap. I'll give you half an hour. Ejected. Move on. Right, number two. A few years ago, must have a drink of coffee. A few years ago, they've made three attempts at a Marvel Fantastic Four movie. And the first one with Lone Grufford, the one I liked, and Chris Evans, the not Chris Evans, the telly guy, Chris Evans, the American actor. They made a couple of transfer, uh, uh, Fantastic Four meets Silver Surfer and another one. They were all right. They were good fun. They were Marvel. They were cheap. Nothing like the X-Men. Nothing like anything like that. And they were all right. And this year they decided to reboot the Fantastic Four again. This is number two, the worst one of the year. And it was an hour and 40 minutes of nothing. It was bad. Super bad, super shit, super crap. If you want to waste time, watch it when it comes out. I went to the pictures to see this. Why? I don't know. I couldn't even get my money back and ask for a refund. It was that bad. So, there you go. Now, my number one worst film of 2015. One, two words. 
Adam Sandler. Need I say any more? We are talking of pixels. Oh, God, where did my life go? Why do I have to watch this? I watch this so you don't have to. This is the reason I do these things. I watch films and tell you not to bother. <sighs> Pixels had a great idea. Directed by Christopher Columbus, who did the Home Alone films, vacation films, and worked with John Hughes, Harry Potter. Brilliant. They had this idea that let's do a film based on the 80s arcade games with Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, Tetris, Space Invaders, all this, these great games that we used to watch as a play as a kid, and they decided to put Adam Sandler, a chubby guy with glasses, or I don't even know his name, the small guy who was in Game of Thrones, and Kevin James. You know, kings and queen, king of queens, and the zookeeper, and they dressed them up like Ghostbusters. And they basically, it starts off the kids, Adam Sandler and Kevin James, the little kids, in this arcade tournament in the final. And the small guy in Game of Thrones cheats and beats Adam Sandler in this final. And then suddenly it jumps to 25 years later when they're all grown up and 40. And Adam Sandler works as a TV repairman. I kid you not, it's a TV repairman, satellite construction and all that. And he's friends with Kevin James still. Only in this instance, Kevin James is the president of America. Don't ask you why, how and where and how the feck he become president of America. But he is. And he still mates with Adam Sandler. Who can just walk into the White House dressed in his gear and no one says anything. And suddenly all the games from all the past are all coming down to earth in different stages to fight all the people of earth and Kevin James and Adam Sandler have to save the day with the Ghostbuster friends it's that shit so do not attempt to watch it if you do I warned you I hated the film and I don't like using the word hate it's a horrible word I despise this film it was shit if someone gave it me free and said hey you can have that I'd say stick it where it doesn't shine so they were my 10 worst films of the year I'll have some more next year no doubt enjoy 2016 hope you enjoyed the little video see you all soon